All right, here are solutions to problem 60 off the math subject GRE practice test. Uh, what we're told is we have this real valued function to find on the reals with the following property. And what we're asked is which of these statements is this property equivalent to? Um, so another way of saying it is four of these five statements are not equivalent to this property up here. So we'll kind of wrap our head around what this property means. And then to show that a statement is not equivalent to a property, we can come up with a counterexample or an example that shows the statement true and the property false, or the other way around, the statement false and the property true. And I think I'm going to do both wherever possible just to kind of help you in studying view different ways to view this problem. So what's going on with this property up here? Uh, for every positive number epsilon, there exists a positive number delta such that the distance between f of x and f of 1 is greater than or equal to epsilon whenever the distance between x and 1 is greater than or equal to delta. Uh, it looks a little bit like the epsilon delta argument for continuity, so you might think, oh, it's probably, they're tricking me, it's probably a discontinuance, it's not. Uh, okay, so it helps me to kind of have a picture of what's going on. So here's a picture of what's going on. Um, here's 1. And I don't know where the hell f of 1 is. I'll throw it right here. There's f of 1. There's 1. What I'm saying is my function f has some height uh, 1 at when it has some height f of 1 when x equals 1. So I'm right there. And then what's going on is you are allowed to choose an epsilon. You can choose any epsilon you want. And then I have to be able to, in order to satisfy this property, choose a delta. So that as long as I'm further than delta away, so you're thinking left and right from 1, I will be, or I guess at least as far away, I will be at least as far away as epsilon up and down from f of 1. So I better prepare for the worst, right? You might choose a really, really, if you choose a small epsilon, this will be a lot easier to do, but you might end up choosing a really, really large epsilon, or large, like way the hell up here. So the distance from here to here is epsilon and that same distance way down here and so I don't know what you chose for epsilon but in case you choose something really really large like that for epsilon I have to be able to come up with a delta so that anytime I'm more than delta away so maybe I'm like all right let's make delta right here so the distance from here to here is delta and I'll write that same distance in the other direction Whenever, whenever I am further than delta away, uh, the height has to be outside of these bounds right here. So by the time I get here, my height has to be, I guess, at least equal to these bounds. Um, and maybe I went up, maybe I went down, we don't know, something like that. On the inside here, I can do whatever the hell I want. It doesn't even state that it's continuous, I don't think. Um, so, shoot, I could jump around a little bit if I felt like it. I could go up out of these bounds if I feel like it and then come back down, do whatever the hell I want. Um, I have this weird function. But what's important is that I'm able to get down to these bounds, and then when I'm further out to the left and the right, I never come back down under these bounds. So you're like, oh, okay, just have it kind of level off and do something like this, right? No, that'll be bad because this epsilon was arbitrary. What if you didn't choose this epsilon? What if you chose this epsilon right here? If this levels off, then I'll never be able to choose a delta that I can get above that epsilon because it leveled off right here. So what ends up happening is this thing has to kind of tail off like this. It has to either go up forever when you go to the right or down forever when you go to the right. And similarly, it has to go up forever when you go to the left and down forever when you go to the left. Um, in other words, it has to do exactly what D specifies here. The limit as the absolute value of x goes to infinity. So the limit when I go way to the right has to be either plus or minus infinity. And when I go way to the left, it has to be plus or minus infinity. So that's the right answer. You can probably get there just by kind of drawing a picture and talking yourself through it. Uh, so if that's sufficient, I guess you can stop listening to this video right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and come up with counterexamples. Uh, so let's see, maybe I'll leave myself a little bit of room here. Sorry, that kind of runs into this. And make a quick grid. And the reason I want a grid is because I want two counterexamples wherever possible. Uh, maybe this first one will be when I satisfy, uh, what are we calling this, a property? How about property true? But uh, this answer, letter, uh, letter answer, I'll just say letter, is false. 
Uh, so if I can come up with an example that satisfies this, that is not continuous, then that would show that this statement is not equivalent to this statement. Similarly, if I can come up with an example so that this statement is true, but this property is not satisfied, in other words, the property is false, and the letter is true, then that would show that the letter is not equivalent to the property right here. So what I'm gonna do is come up with counterexamples in each case. Okay, so let's do this. F is continuous at x equals one. So in this case, I want the letter to be false. So I better come up with a discontinuous function, but I want one that satisfies this property. So I want it to go off towards infinity in one direction or another. Uh, so what I can do, maybe I'll color code these, I'll make this green, is use a piecewise function, and I'll let f of x equal x, if x does not equal one, but uh, let's see, anything other than one, so zero maybe, if x equals one. So if I define this to be my function right here, then it doesn't matter what you choose for epsilon, maybe you choose epsilon as a thousand, you make this way up here, and I'm like, all right, just make delta, I don't know, 2000, right? Because if you're 2000 away from x, so now I'm talking about what is f of 2001 or f of negative 1999, well, the answers to those questions are 2001 and negative 1999 respectively. And those are certainly more than a thousand away from zero, which is the height at f of one. In fact, I could probably do this more um, precisely. I could let delta equal, uh, what, epsilon plus one? Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. If I make delta one more than epsilon, uh, will that work in the negative direction as well? Yeah, I think that will work. Uh, okay, so choose delta equals epsilon plus one and it'll satisfy that for this guy. Um, should I continue down this column or go across? I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna continue down this column. So I still want this property to be true, but now I want my function to not be discontinuous at x equals one. So not discontinuous at x equals one just means continuous at x equals one. Here's an example of a function that is continuous at x equals one. It's continuous everywhere, but all I needed is for it to be continuous at x equals one that satisfies this property. Right here, I can just let delta equal epsilon um, because when the, the distance I am in the x direction away from one will be the exact same as the distance I am in the y direction away from f of one, which is exactly one. Uh, so if delta equals epsilon, then this statement is true whenever this statement is true. Uh, what about f is unbounded? That one's a little bit tricky. So I want something that makes this statement, uh, what am I doing? The property true, but this letter false. So, okay, this is not that hard actually in this column. I want something that is not unbounded. Um, oh, this is hard, <laughs> confusing myself. I want something that is not unbounded for which this is true. Well, think about it all you want. It'll be impossible. And that's because uh, you can kind of think about the contrapositive if, or I don't even know if logically I should state it that way. Yeah, I guess I could. If this, okay, let's do this easier. If F is not unbounded, F is bounded. If F is bounded, then that means the height of this function are, is always between uh, two numbers. Pick whichever of those numbers is further away from F of one and let epsilon be one greater than that. Then uh, you'll be screwed, right? Because you'll be saying that I have to find a delta that makes the height of this function greater than where this thing is bounded by. And you can't get above the bounds. That's exactly what the bounds is. This right here is impossible. Um, this one we don't even consider because this is the answer to the question. And kind of for the same logic, uh, it would not be possible to come up with something that satisfies this if this letter were false. Because if this letter is false, then the limit as x approaches either infinity or negative infinity, I don't know which one, is not infinity. If the limit is not infinity, then it either, uh, well, then it, hmm, what's the easiest way to say that? Uh, then it's bounded. Then, well, no, that's not true either. Shoot. Uh, if the limit is not infinity, either it converges to a certain point or it oscillates between two different points. That's not 100% true either. Uh, I don't know. That's false. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, what about this guy here? The integral from zero to infinity of the absolute value of f of x dx equals infinity. So is it possible to have this be true where this is false? Well, if this is false, that means that this thing 
is equal to a finite number. But if this is equal to a finite number uh, instead of an infinite number, then this can't possibly be true. It can't go up forever in one direction or down forever in the other direction. This is also impossible. What about going down this column over on this side? Um, is it possible to make this property false when this letter is true? In other words, can I come up with a continuous function that makes this property right here false? Sure. Um, f of x equals a constant, for example, would do. Or let's do f of x equals, if you want a non-constant function, sine of x maybe. Let's make f of x sine of x and epsilon equal 2. All right, sine of 1 is some value between negative 1 and positive 1. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's some decimal value in there. Um, actually, I think it's irrational, but whatever. Uh, sine of 1 is some value between negative 1 and positive 1, not inclusive of those endpoints. And so if I'm 2 away from those values, I am outside of that interval. Um, and if I'm outside of that interval, then uh, what I'm saying is pick some delta so that the height is always outside of that interval by which it's bounded. It kind of, this is a consequence of this fact down here um, that that would work as a counterexample. What about f is discontinuous at x equals one? Wait, I already did that, right? And the property is false and the letter is true. So, okay, I did not do that already. I want this property to be false, but I want the letter to be true. So I want a discontinuous function where this stuff happens. Um, lots of options, one would be Here's a discontinuous function. It's always either zero or one. Maybe it's zero if x does not equal one and it's one if x equals one. And let's let epsilon be equal to one, two. Let's make it two. Yeah, two. Uh, then the property will be false, right? There's no way I can be more than two away from the height uh, when x equals one, which is zero, which is one. I can't get to from negative one to three, I can't get somewhere outside of that interval right there because it's always just equal to zero, the height. Uh, what about f is unbounded? So the question is, property false, letter true. I want something that is not bounded that makes this property false right here. Um, I want something that is, I want the letter to be true. So I want something that is not bounded, okay, that makes the letter true. Um, so the trick here is you to be unbounded, it has to kind of go off towards infinity. And you're like, well, if it goes off towards infinity, that gets me into trouble. Well, no, not necessarily, uh, because I could have an asymptote somewhere. So um, I don't know, tangent of x would be a perfect example. Um, tangent of x goes off towards infinity. But if I just let epsilon equal 1, then what I can do is because tangent is periodic, uh, the height of the function will, will return to f of 1. So what I'm saying is that f of 1 plus k pi. So this thing's periodic. Every pi it repeats. So every time I add some integer value k number of pi's to 1, uh, I will have the exact same height I had at f of 1. So if I make epsilon anything greater than zero, I can use this as my counterexample for a sufficiently large k. Now you go ahead and try finding a delta. It won't work because I can always get this bigger than any delta you're coming up with. Um, this last example here. So I want something so that the integral is infinity that does not satisfy this property. It's easy enough. Let's just let f of x equal some constant, one maybe. Um, the integral of this thing from zero to infinity would be infinity. You can think about this as the area of the rectangle with height one and length infinity. It has area infinity. Um, so this is true, but this is certainly false. I could just let epsilon equal any number uh, greater than zero, so one to keep it with a whole number. Um, the height for any x value is exactly one, so this difference right here is always zero. I can never get it to be greater than one regardless here. So I don't know, maybe that was overkill showing all these different counterexamples. Maybe the picture was enough, uh, in which case hopefully you quit this video 10 minutes ago.